everyone and welcome to the Oak Arts YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to be making a bag that is perfect for showcasing your favorite material. Today, we're going to be making the Tuesday tote and this pattern comes to us from Knotted Threads. Now, especially when I'm a little stuck in like a sewing rut and it's like, I want to sew something, but I don't know what a tote is my go-to. I love tote bags so much. They are so useful. Use them for every day. Use them for going to the grocery stores, for travel, for the beach, for the pool, for overnight trips. I mean, it's just, it is such a simple, simple shape just a tote bag, but you can do so much with it. And so I love this pattern so much. The Tuesday tote actually has two different options. I chose the same option for all the bags I've made so far. I really love this center strip, but the other option is to have like the bottom a different color and the top a different material. So that's especially good if you want to use like a quilt cotton or like a, a cotton canvas, some sort of material that maybe you want to keep a little bit cleaner and you don't want touching things. So especially if you were going to use it as a grocery tote or as like a pool bag or something, you could use a vinyl on the bottom part. And then that cotton woven, cotton canvas on the top and you wouldn't have to worry so much about the top part getting dirty or anything like that. However, if you're using all vinyl like I am, I love this center strip. I think this is beautiful. So the Tuesday tote is very simple. It is a front panel, it is a back panel. You piece these together however you'd like, center strip or bottom and top. The lining is just a basic lining. I'm using water resistant canvas as always, especially for a tote bag. I think that's really a good way to go. And then you have two pieces of webbing. You can use one and a half inch, one inch, two inch, whatever size of webbing you wanna use, you can make your own straps. Easy peasy. So such a simple, quick make, but it's just the perfect bag. So you might've seen on our channel that we do really like to use like handmade grocery totes and things like that. This is another one of those perfect for that. Perfect for the grocery store. Perfect for just keeping it in your car. If you want to adapt this pattern, you definitely could. This is why it's a great like base pattern. You could add a magnetic snap to the top to snap it shut. If you wanted to do like a recess zipper, you could do that with some of the skill sets we've gone through on the channel. It is an easy, adaptable pattern, but it's also just really fun to make. So thank you so much to Nada Threads for allowing me to use your patterns on the channel. If you guys haven't already gone to their site, make sure you go check it out. Their patterns are perfection. This is, this is a very happy, beginner, simple pattern. This is perfect for anybody just starting out or anybody who just is like, oh, I have this beautiful material and I just want it to be shown off and I don't want to spend a lot of time making it. This is a perfect pattern for that. However, if you want to get into some really fancy bags, I'm talking the sleekest designs, the most beautiful backpacks and slings, you got to go check out their other patterns. They are amazing. They are all on the list. Every single time there's a new pattern released by Knotted Threads, I'm like, add it to my list. Whew. We're going we're gonna to dive into those in the near future, but for today, I really wanted to keep it Pretty simple, especially for those of you guys just starting out with your sewing machines. I know a lot of you guys said you got sewing machines for Christmas and you're like, ah, what do I do with it? I want to make something, but now I'm kind of nervous. This is the best, best bag you could start with, honestly. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, leave them down below. Go check out Knotted Threads website. Go check it out and then leave a comment with what pattern you want to see because Oh my gosh, I know. I know there's like two specific backpacks or slings I'm thinking about that are just absolutely stunning and perfect. And every time I've seen someone make it, it all always comes out perfect. It's like every single one of them looks like a designer bag. They're on the list, I know. All right guys, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna be making the version B once again, which is like the three strips, the vertical strips. And for that, I'm gonna be using all vinyl. And so if you are gonna be using a vinyl, especially if you're gonna be using a directional print vinyl, because of the height of this bag, you wanna make sure when you get a roll of vinyl, it's the 18 inch roll, not the 12 inch roll, because it has to be pretty tall. Um, if it's not directional print, then you can use the 18 inch or the 12 inch vinyl roll. But I have one roll of vinyl here that I'm gonna be using for the center of the bag or about a quarter of a yard. And then for the side of the bag, I have another roll here. And then for the lining, you're gonna need a half a yard of Water resistant canvas is great. I actually used nylon on a previous bag. So any sort of lining material, you, you could even use quilt cotton here. Just, I would suggest interfacing it with woven interfacing. I'm not using any interfacing or stabilizer because all my material is pretty thick on its own. So I don't really think it needs the extra beef, but if you wanted to, you could definitely add more to it. And then you're gonna need one and a half yards of seatbelt webbing, any size, one inch, one and a half inch. We don't have any hardware in this bag. So any size webbing, I love this kind of chunky webbing that I got from Zipper Valley, it's so cute. 
you. It was gifted and I love it. And then I'm gonna try something today that uh, we've been talking about on social media. If you haven't seen these, this is called a Dunsey. We sell them in Shop Oakla Roots. Um, we use these for a different purpose, but some people mentioned using them on bag straps. So I'm gonna give it a try today. It's just a little accessory, just a little bling on a strap. Um, doesn't really serve a purpose, it's just cute. But I'm gonna try this out today. And this one is not engraved, but we do usually engrave some sort of saying on them. Stay tuned on social media if you wanna see more of those. So there's really not a lot of extra stuff today. Um, clips, as always. Once again, my go-to for thread in the top needle, I'm gonna be sewing with a Tex 45 weight thread. This is color Fairy Floss, it's from Wizardry Stitchery. In the bobbin, I have a Guterman thread from Joann's. And then my needle of choice is a Microtex 8012. Good pair of scissors is gonna be good. My favorite are Kai scissors. I have my bag tag as always. And then a marking tool to draw out the box corners a small one inch by six inch ruler, and a stiletto to help at the machine. All right, so here's all the pattern pieces for today. It's very simple. I have two center strips here. Let's put that in the right. I don't wanna sew that on upside down. I have two center panels, and then I have four side panels. Now, when you cut out your box corners, make sure that they are mirrored. So you're gonna have two with the box corners cut out on the bottom left, and two with the box corners cut out on the bottom right. And this is for the exterior of the bag. And like I said, all my vinyl is a, like I would consider a medium weight vinyl. Um, um, so I'm not adding any sort of interfacing or anything like that to it or stabilizer. And then for the lining, I have my two lining cuts and these also have the box corners cut out of both the bottoms. And then I have my two straps here. Easy peasy. So the first thing we wanna do is build our exterior panels. So just make sure that you're lining it up like this. If you're doing option A, then you'll have like a bottom panel and a top panel. Um, I always make bags like that, which is why I chose option B today because it's a little different for me. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I'm gonna start with the right side here, and we're gonna take this right side panel and with the bottom right corner popped out over here, we're gonna flip this right side down on the right side of that center panel and line up those long straight edges and grab your clips and clip these together. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and let's just stitch right along this right clipped edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have the right side clipped on, I'm gonna wait to top stitch this, I'm gonna attach the left side first. So I'm gonna take the left side and lay it right side down. Again, make sure you're using a left side panel that has the bottom left corner. Cut out and line up those straight edges. And it's okay if you leave the right side folded over, you're not going to catch this in that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you can just leave them folded over like this. And you can actually clip both of them on at once if you'd like to save time and then just sew them both down. And just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna sew along this left edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. So once you have both the side panels sewed on, we're gonna be looking on the bottom of the edges here. And I'm specifically concerned with these side panels, not the center panel. So looking at the side panels only, I'm gonna measure about a half of an inch up from the bottom edge, only with the side panel. I'm gonna cut into the seam to the stitches, not the middle panel here, just the side panel. I'm gonna do this for both of these. This is gonna help reduce bulk when we sew the bottoms together. It's just gonna make things a little easier for us, which we appreciate. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to press these open and we want the seam to go behind that center panel. So I'm just going to finger press this here on both sides. But on the bottom edge here, you want to open the seam. So you see how right now the seam is pressed towards the center on both sides, but because we made those snips into the side panel seam, we can press this open. Keep that pressed open, so just pay attention to it. If you wanna put some double-sided tape here to stick this back, go ahead and do that. But what we wanna do now is we wanna top stitch along the center panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides of that center panel, holding the seam on the side behind the center panel, except on the bottom where the seam is going to be open. Now this is what one of your main panels should look like. Go ahead and repeat all of that with the second main exterior panel. Okay, so now we're gonna add our straps and I'm gonna I'm gonna use my little Dunsey here. So I think this is going to be my front panel, which I'll add my um, bag tag to after this. So when we do the straps, we're pretty much just going to lay the straps around that center panel and have them overhang by half of an inch. And so I'm just trying to get a visual of how this is gonna look when it's done, like that, so I can figure out how I wanna thread on my little Dunsey. So I wanna thread it on just like this. So I'm gonna go however you wanna do this. I think I'm gonna cover it. So I don't, since I don't have engraving on this, I'm just going to cover the front of this. 
There we go. So I'm just going to thread that through just like I would do with like bag hardware. And I'm just going to push it up a bit so it's out of my way, but I can always move it around later. So my strap will be like this and I'll flip it right side down. Okay. So now take your strap and you want it to overhang the top edge of your bag by half of an inch and the inner edge of the strap is going to just line up right with that middle panel. Same thing on the other side, have the strap overextend by half of an inch and the inner edge lines right up with that main panel. All right, there we go. Repeat this with your other panel and strap. And now take both of these to the sewing machine and just top stitch right along the edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So an eighth of an inch from the top of the bags, not an eighth of an inch from the end of the straps, just to hold these in place. All right, now if you have a bag tag and you have a preference on where you're going to put it, grab the panel you wanna put the bag tag on. And I forgot to mention double-sided tape in the beginning of this video, I apologize. But yeah, you wanna use double-sided tape if you have a bag tag that you sew on, just to make sure it doesn't end up all crooked Okay, so I went per the pattern's suggestion and measured five inches up from the bottom edge of my front panel and just marked a midpoint to make sure it was centered. And I just used the tape to stick down my bag tag. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and just top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now your two exterior panels are ready to be put together. So grab both of them and make sure that the direction is correct. Straps on top and lay them both right sides together. We're just gonna focus on the bottom edge for now. So I like to line up the seams first. Remember how we cut into the edges here? You're gonna spread those seams open and just line them up with the front and back panels. Grab some clips to clip these together and try to make sure you're clipping those seams open. And again, if you're struggling to keep them open, you can always add double-sided tape to the side with the flap so that it stays back. Or you could always go and just baste along that bottom edge first at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold that little side flap down. Whatever makes it easier. All right, once you have this clipped, let's go sew along this bottom edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn, you're gonna open this up, flip it over, and press that seam open as best you can. So if you're using material that you can iron, go ahead and iron to press it open. Otherwise, you can just use your fingers like I am. And I'm just gonna pretty much keep it pressed open using my fingers at the machine, because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the machine. And with that seam, it's always hard to get it started. You're gonna press that seam open and we're gonna top stitch along both sides of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, always making sure that the seam is staying open. And the point of the top stitching is to flatten out that seam really nicely. Alrighty, nice and top stitched. Now, put your straps in and fold these right sides together once again. And now we're gonna work on the sides. So line up the side edges and clip together and do this for both long side edges. And now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along both of these sides at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, now let's box these corners. So just grab one corner and kind of put your fingers in where the cutout part is and then pull that bottom seam together with that side seam and make sure you press the side seam open with your fingers. If you wanna press the whole side seam open with an iron, that's a great option. If you have material, you can do that with. Um, otherwise, I just kinda of leave it. It's fine. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just opening up this box corner and bringing those two seams together and making sure I open the seam on the side before clipping it together. All right, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew along both of these clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, as always, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Since I'm using a thicker material, I'm also going to do a second row of stitching just outside, just a little bit closer to the edge, just to support the weight of the material. All right, now the exterior is good to go. You can set it to the side. All right, now grab both of your lining panels and lay them right sides together, lining them up with the boxed bottoms on the bottom. And now we're gonna make a few marks just to help guide us while we're sewing this. So with these two right sides together, whichever side you're gonna have up when you're sewing, that's the side we're gonna mark on. And we're marking on the back of that material. First, you're gonna mark one inch down from the top right corner, and then also mark two inches down from the top right corner. Do the same thing on the top left corner, one inch and two inch. 
And then in the bottom, centered, make about a five to six inch hole. So you're gonna mark one spot over here, then about five or six inches mark over here. I'm using a six inch opening because my material is thicker. So, but it's centered here. It's not hanging off the side in either direction. Now what we're gonna do is at the top here, we're going to start at a three eighths inch seam allowance. Once we hit that one inch mark on the top right corner, we're going to start increasing our seam allowance to half of an inch. And then once we get to that two inch mark, we should be at half of an inch now seam allowance. So it's going to kind of veer down just like that. And then you're gonna continue sewing at a half inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna do that. And then once I get down to this bottom right corner, it's really neat. She says to just take the next corner you're gonna to go to on the box corner and with the needle down in this bottom right corner, you're going to move the material up to meet it and then continue sewing along the bottom edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. So instead of like sewing and then lifting the needle up, having a gap, sewing again, you're just going to kind of pull these together at the sewing machine and continue sewing. It's just a little technique that's a little easier. Um, once you get to the mark down here for your opening, you're going to backstitch and then you're gonna jump over the opening and then continue sewing at a half of an inch seam allowance. Once again, leave the needle down in that corner and then pull the side corner up and continue sewing at a half of an inch seam allowance on the left side until you get to that two inch mark where you're going to start decreasing your seam allowance to a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And so by the time you get to that one inch mark on the top left, you're going to be sewing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and backstitch at the top. I know that's a lot of instructions. It's a very simple technique. Like I said, this is a good bag to practice on. This is a practice bag. So it's a technique you're gonna learn and you're gonna remember for all future bags. All right, so this is how it should look after it's sewn. You see we have those corners kind of tucked in. So now all you have to do is separate your bag like this at the corner and see how it just naturally flattens out. Just go ahead and do that and you can press open your seam or, or put them in opposite directions, whichever is easiest. If you have a more lightweight material, it's gonna be fine either way. But we wanna press open that seam and we wanna just straighten out this boxed corner and add some clips to keep it nice and flat. Do this for both of them. And the nice thing about this technique is that you don't have to like struggle with keeping it together, with like making sure those seams don't move around, you know, because they're already sewn connected. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just sew along both of these clipped edges at a half inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, now if you'd like, you can trim down that seam allowance on the box corner. I just trim it in half. And you can trim down seam allowances elsewhere also if you want to, but this bag is, is such a big bag that a bigger seam allowance isn't going to feel bulky. So you really don't have to trim seam allowances where you don't want to. All right, and if you want, you can go ahead and press open this seam as well. I'm going to leave it because in the end, I find it's fine. But turn your lining right side out and then grab your exterior. Your exterior is wrong side out. You're going to take your lining and you're going to put it in here. So you have right sides together when you do this. Make sure the straps stay where they need to. Here we go. And now with the lining inside, we're going to match up the side seams. This is where if you press those side seams open, it's gonna be a little bit easier, but if you didn't press them open, just finger press them open and clip the side seams together and then just clip along the entire top edge of the bag, clipping the exterior and lining together, right sides together. All right, now let's sew along this top clipped edge here at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have these sewn together, Pull the lining out, reach into that hole, and pull the exterior out through that hole. Once you have it all turned out, put your hand in to the exterior side. This comes in. And just poke out those corners. There we go. And then take your lining, and shove that in there, and let's focus on this top edge now. And what we want to do is we want to roll this top edge so that the lining's on the inside and the exterior is on the outside. So I'm just gonna roll it with my fingers and add clips along the top edge to get it nice and straight. If you have material that you weren't able to like really press with the seam open, when you get to the seams over here, reach inside that opening in your lining and just use your fingers to feel and make sure that the seams are pressed open everywhere and then fold it down, materials wrong sides together and clip along that seam. Because sometimes the seam will kind of fold in on itself and it, you're like, why is it so bulky? It's because it's not flat anymore, it's not open. 
So that's how you can check by leaving the hole open in the lining while you top stitch this. It allows you to still check and make sure it's all it's all good. All right, once you have that all prepped and ready to go, we're gonna top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go nice and slow. Uh, when I top stitch this, I like to remove the table off my machine and then my sewing arm goes inside the bag and then I just kind of wrap this around the sewing arm slowly while I'm top stitching it. If you have bulky bits, just be slow and gentle as you go over those. All righty, that's looking so good. And I really like my little bag bling here. I think that looks so cute. Oh my gosh, isn't this so pretty? Okay, the last thing we have to do is just close up the hole in the lining. So pull the lining out and then just straighten out this bottom seam here. You can tuck your fingers into that opening and tug a little bit. And the raw edges from the lining should just naturally fold in on themselves. If not, just, you know, encourage them a little bit by shoving them in there. <laughs> and fold down this edge here. You don't have to be too particular with how much material you're folding down. Ideally, you're folding in a half of an inch on each side. Um, but if it's a little bit more, a little bit less, that's perfectly fine, won't be noticeable. Just make sure you have that opening closed. And let's just top stitch along this clipped edge at a eighth of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, that was the last step. Just push it in there. Oh my gosh, that is so cute, that is so fun. How sweet is that? And it's so beginner friendly. So this is a great bag for you to test out materials on. See if you get, you know, some new vinyl, some new materials, you just really want to show it off. This is a perfect pattern for that. A good one to play with. I mean, look, I played with my little Dunsey and I think this is great. I think I'm actually going to lower it down just a little bit. I think I want it closer to the top of the bag. Yeah, just like that. That is so cute. And the fun thing about the Dunsies too is you can thread it either way. So I have it threaded like this because they don't have engraving on it, but you could also thread it the opposite way so that it shows up like this on the right side. And you could have your name on it, you could have bag maker, handmade, going out shopping, whatever you want. So we're having a lot of fun with these Dunsies with shapes and, and text and things like that. So if you have any um, shapes, if, if you think this is cute and you like it, uh, if you have any specific shapes you'd like to see out of these and any text options, leave them down in the comments below because I would really, I'd really like your input. But I hope you guys love making this, this is so fun. How fun is this bag? So you can see this one, I just decided to do that print in the middle. And like I said, if you have a material, you just really want to show off. Like these are two materials I love. I love this Star Wars print. I do. I don't I don't care if it's themey. I love it. It's beautiful and it's pastel and springy and fun. And so I love that it really shows off a big print because this is not going to work on a small bag. This print material really wouldn't do well on like a snack bag or anything like that. It needs a big bag to really stand out. And I get lots of fun images on here. But then also this side iridescent, super soft. Oh, it's so nice. This material on the sides also perfect. I got my little, my little bag bling dunsies over here, which I think is just such a fun touch. And then some beautiful, beautiful webbing. That's a very natural look. Easy peasy lining. You could definitely add a zipper pocket, slip pocket, any type of pocket you want to add in there. You could get so creative with this. You could definitely add a way to clip on your keychain to this. You could add, you know, other straps. You could do more crossbody straps if you'd like. I feel like this would be kind of a big shape for a crossbody bag. Honestly, you're gonna start looking like a, like a, what is it, like a mule carrying, you know, saddlebags on the side. Uh, but if you wanted to do a crossbody bag for ease of use, you could definitely add crossbody straps on the side. You can build on this and customize it in so many different ways. Honestly, one thing I was really thinking about is I wanna do like a big quilt block made out of vinyl. That's kind of a goal, especially with a bag like this. I think it would be so cool to do like the center strip as a pieced, big, fun, triangle and square quilt block all made out of vinyl and then added on. I think that would be so cute. So I hope you love making the Tuesday tote as much as I do. It's such a fun bag. If you've already made it, I'm sure most of you guys have. A lot of you guys are the ones who told me I should make this bag. But if you use the video to make this bag, make sure you tag me on social media. Also make sure you tag Knotted Threads. This is such, such a fun bag. It's just fun. It's just fun. And that's honestly what I'm going for right now. As we leave winter and go into spring, I just want to make fun stuff. Some of those things are going to be quick and simple and easy. Some of them will be more complicated, uh, but it's all, it's all fun. So. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something, have a lot of fun with these patterns. 
If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roads, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.